adjust your standing position. fluttering the eyes open once more. We'll build our mountain pose. I'm going to turn, but you'll stay facing the sea. Let's take a look at our feet. Are they nice and parallel? Hips over knees, over ankles, everything in a nice line. Perfect. Let's lift the shoulders up to the ears and down. Palms face the sea, gently open. Heart is proud. The pelvis slightly tilts in just to engage the core a little bit to support the back. Heart proud, crown tall, beautiful. So our mountain pose is the point of our balance. So if we don't start perfectly balanced in our standing, we can never attempt to stand or attempt to stand on one foot. So we always want to begin in that perfect standing pose. You could literally stay here for hours because everything is supported. Your core is supported. You've got a little micro bend in the knees that keeps the legs supported. Perfect. So from our mountain pose, we'll take sun salutations, Surya Namaskar. We'll take one super slow and then we'll do three rounds together. It's not too complicated, but if you get lost, just keep breathing. We'll start with an inhale. The arms come out and up once more. We'll then flat back, dive ourselves, leading with the heart, coming all the way back down into our forward fold. We'll then take a halfway lift, inhaling. Hands come to the shins or the thighs. We want to come into a perfect L shape and we keep those elbows into the body to keep the shoulders soft. On the next exhale, we fall back into our forward fold, so the gaze comes to look between the legs. And then on our next inhale, we bend the knees, we spread our wings once more, and with a flat back, using the core, heart and then head lifts all the way up, Hands touch, maybe a slight back bend at the top, and then hands fall down to center. All right, feel free to go at your own pace or stay with me. Inhale, wings lift up. Exhale, polish and dive off your mat. Inhale, halfway lift, L shape. Exhale, fold back over. Reverse dive, bend the knees, flat back, heart lifts, head lifts, maybe slight back bend at the top, hands fall through the third eye, lips and heart. Inhale, up and exhale, pelican dive down to Uttanasana. Inhale, L shape, exhale. Inhale, back to forward fold. Inhale, reverse dive. Wings lift you out and up. Maybe a slight back bend. Exhale, hands to heart center. Last round. Inhale, down at you. Exhale, dive down. Uttanasana. Inhale, Ardo Uttanasana. Exhale, Uttanasana. Reverse dive, leading with the heart, following with the mind. Wonderful mantra for life. Exhale. Hands come into Samasita. Close the eyes once more. Notice the increase in your heartbeat. Being grateful for the ability
Letting the arms float towards the sides. We're going to shift our bodies to look at the mangroves and take a step back with your right foot, coming into a nice big V position. Hands will start at the hips. Take a look at your feet. They're gonna be slightly pigeon-toed in and heels reaching out. Widen your stance a little bit as much as you can. We'll take a big inhale and center, heart lifts up. And let's just fold halfway to begin. So hinging perfectly at the hips, we'll feel a stretch in the back of our legs. So we think about pressing the back thighs towards the parking lot and then reaching out with the crown of the head. Reaching out of that pelvic bone. Taking three breaths here. It does require a little bit of core work to kind of balance the body and not let everything just sink down. Our cores are super important for our balance. That's the place that it all starts. So we try to engage it throughout our practice. It also keeps our back safe in many of our poses. A great way to engage the core is on every exhale. Think about that belly button coming in and up the spine. We'll then let ourselves fold completely over, maybe rocking the shoulders a little bit right and left, maybe bending into one leg and then bending into the other, rotating the hands on the earth or letting them tiptoe around. Just loosening up in the hips, nice free movement. We'll then lift ourselves up, but we're going to take it a little bit different. Instead of a flat back, we're going to roll up the spine one vertebrae at a time. So your gaze will come to your belly button. We'll bend the knees and roll up as slowly as you can. One little vertebrae at a time. When we get to the top, shoulders lift up to heels and down. We'll turn the left toes towards the C. Place the hands on the hips. We'll kick back the right hips. Send the arms out to front and back of the mat. And we'll reach, 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 reach towards the seat. Keep reaching, 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 reaching. And when you can't reach anymore, come into Trikonasana, triangle pose. To get that right arm lined up perfectly, let's take the right hand to the right shoulder first, and then open up to the sky with that right hand. We think about our hips pressing towards the mangroves. Our head stays in line with the spine. Traditionally, yoga had us turn to look at the sky, but I really think that's not very safe for the neck, at least mine, unless you enjoy it. I typically like to just look straight ahead, keep everything in line. On our inhales, we think about spreading our wings. On our exhales, maybe we get a millimeter deeper. Next inhale, let's float ourselves up, back to center. Hands come on hips once more. We'll pivot the left foot in again to come back to neutral. And then we'll pivot the right foot to face the bridge. And we'll take triangle on the other side. So arms come out. We reach, 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 reach towards the bridge as much as you can. Keep going, going, going until you fall into us. <laughs> left hand comes to the left shoulder and then reaches up to the sky.
letting ourselves come back slowly to center, seeing how smooth you can make you transition. Rotating the right toes back in. And then we're going to take a little moonwalk with our legs to get into our hips. So super slow. Heels come in towards each other. Then toes in. Heels in. Toes in. Heels in. Toes in. Heels. In. Until you're all the way in. Yep, it might feel weird, but it's really good for the hips. Beautiful. And when we're back to center, I'm going to have everyone actually turn yourselves around and look at the sea again. <laughs> yeah, we'll be practicing our balancing, so the shoes definitely might help. No, I'm going to move in here. Sure. Yeah. All right. So our balance, of course, starts with that nice mountain pose. Feet perfectly parallel. Knees nice and loose. Hips nice and soft. Palms face the sea. Look at the feet. Are they truly in little railroad tracks? Shoulders up, down and back. Crown of the head reaches to the sky. Heart nice and proud. So we'll begin by just letting our weight shift on over to our left foot. Just playing with lifting that right foot up a little bit. Maybe wiggling out the foot. And we choose a drishti, something in front of us that's not moving. A non-moving focal point. American Shoals Lighthouse is great. But some folks prefer to look at something on the ground, one of these rocks, whatever serves you. And then let's see if we can bring that leg into a 90 degree position. Our fingers are used as imaginary little kickstands, reaching that third finger towards the earth. If we come out, we just try, try again. We keep a little micro bend in that standing leg. I mean, micro bend, it can be like a pretty deep bend, whichever lets you balance. So your flat surfaces are helpful. We'll stay on this side so you can practice it a little bit more. If you're here in the 90 degree angle and you just want to play, test yourself, you can always open yourself up. Like yes, Debbie mentioned before class that people who can't balance on one leg for 10 seconds will die in 10 years. So right. I read that yesterday in the news. We've got much more than 10 years on our hands, That's each right. one of us. So we got to make sure we can do this. All right, let it go. <laughs> I mean, it does totally make sense so important, but there's like no reason in our society to practice it other than in yoga, so. All right, other side. Perfect mountain pose. I also like to kind of rock forwards and backwards on my feet to make sure I've got really good footing. Maybe I even rock right and left, just kind of centering it all out. It's just going to build a good foundation. Choosing that drishti, resting the eyes gently on it, and then we lift the other leg. Maybe just playing at first, I just kind of skip that part. And then 90 degree angle, little micro bend in that standing leg. Think about the hips being perfectly square, sometimes helpful. some folks like the hands on the hips, some like them here. It's all a matter of you playing with it. It's your practice, not mine not anyone else's, your practice. Maybe you play with opening. Keep the shoulders down. The face is soft. Sometimes we clench up in our face and it does the opposite of how we want. <laughs> Maybe we play with opening. Definitely a challenge here in the great outdoors. You're on the rock or flat surface where things are moving so much. You know, it's always a lot easier in a studio where you just have walls. <laughs> I think it's more natural out here. All right, let it go whenever you're done practicing, unless you want to keep going. Shake out the legs. We'll come to the front.
front of our mat, taking our feet to either side. And we'll come into Malasana, Yogi Squat. So hands come at the heart center. We'll take this super slow. If our squats are way up in the air, that's just fine. It's our practice. We'll take a big inhale and we'll exhale, let the hips sink down. Arms come to the inside of the thighs. Beautiful. Not easy at all. We'll take two breaths here. We'll then take one hand in front, one hand in back, and let ourselves fall onto our bum, however gracefully or ungracefully that may be. We'll take our legs out long in front of us. We're coming into Dandasana, our staff pose. Let's take the flesh out from underneath the bum. So we can super ground those bones down in there. We'll lift the shoulders up to the ears and down. Palms are on either side of the hips. Just gently <laughs> resting something. Gently resting on either side of the hips. Toes reach towards the face. And I want everyone to bend your knees as much as is needed to have a super tall back. So it should be as if everything from your sacrum up is in a standing position. So that might require those knees to be bent in a good amount. Sometimes if we straighten out our legs, then we wind up here. We want to keep everything nice and tall. We reach the toes towards the face, reach the heels to the ocean. Beautiful. We'll stay here for three breaths. You'll notice this pose also takes a little bit of that core work, lifting that belly in and up, keeping our lower back safe. So many of us wind up with low back issues because we've completely lost our cores and any control over them, which is an easy thing to do <laughs> in our world. So no judgment, but that's why we engage. Yoga. We're then going to fold over those legs, but I want you to go super slow. We'll tiptoe the fingers. We'll then have the palms face up. And again, it's more about that hinge. We're not rounding over the legs, we're reaching the heart past our gaze. No need to hold on to anything particular. Think more about the heart reaching and the hinge at the hips and keeping the toes flexed towards the face, the energy out through both of the heels. Float your way back upright. We're going to take the right knee into the chest, placing the bottom of the right foot on the earth next to the thigh, keeping that left heel flexing towards the ocean. We'll wrap the left arm around the right knee. Inhale nice and tall with the right hand, tall spine, and then we'll twist over towards the right using that back hand as a little kickstand. Getting that back hand as close to the body as possible will help to keep the spine nice and tall. On our inhales, we become taller. On our exhales, we feel stooped. next inhale we'll come back to center let that right leg float on down and we're going to take 
to counter twist, just take the body and kind of round out over your left hip. You'll notice the spine, a little bit of tension, since it's the complete opposite of what we just did. In the mid back, nice and slightly. Oh, beautiful. And then coming back to center, let that right leg come long, shake both out a little bit. And then we'll bring the left into the chest. Take that left arm up and over and twist towards the left. Right heel reaching towards our crown. with that core engagement here, we're noticing our twist when we bring the core in, we actually are able to get a little bit deeper into the twist because we're literally getting our belly out of the way. And then come back to center, flop that left leg or left knee over and take the counter twist, surrounding the spine over the right hip. Coming back to center, legs will come long out in front of you, and we'll take a look behind us on our mat and make sure we've got enough room to lower our bodies all the way back down. We'll take the arms out in front of us, we're back in our staff pose, perfectly upright in the upper body, toes reach towards the face, and we'll take a half roll back, so slow. Slowly, as slow as you can go, using the core, looking at the toes, lower yourself all the way down to the ground. Maybe a little crunch at the bottom, if it saves you, or not at all. And arms come up overhead. Let's take another big morning type stretch. So stretching the toes away from the body, stretching the hands away from the body. And then we'll take banana asana. So right ankle comes over towards the right side of the mat, to the right corner of the mat. Left ankle comes to rest on top of the right ankle. We keep our hips exactly where they are and we scooch our upper body with our shoulders over to the right as well, coming into a nice banana shape. Right hand clasps onto the left wrist and helps us to elongate that left side body. On our inhales, we reach out with our limbs. On our exhales, let's be sure to press that left thumb back into the earth. On our next inhale, scooch the shoulders first, back to center, switch out the clasp of the hands, uncross the legs, left ankle comes to the corner of the left mat, right ankle comes to rest on top of the left ankle, and we scooch, scooch over with our shoulders, keeping that right hip down. Inhale, you 
elongate. Exhale. Slowly scooching our shoulders back to center. Uncross the legs. And now they'll come into a slight V shape. Arms will rest at the sides, palms facing up, coming into our final rest. Shavasana. Rotating the legs a little bit in and out to let them go. Ankles splay towards either side. Knees are soft. Hips a bit more open than they were an hour ago. Elongate the spine as much as you can on the earth, utilizing all of the support below you. Shoulders drip down the back. Fingers unclench, toes uncurled. Jolly, cheek soft, forehead dripping towards either side. We allow our bodies to sink, sink. Taking this time as human beings, not doing. Let it go. Let go of the ways you thought life would unfold. The holding of plans or dreams or expectations. Let it all go. Save your strength to swim with the tide. The choice to fight what is here before you now will only result in struggle, fear, and desperate attempts to flee from the very energy you long for. Let go. Let it all go and flow with the grace that washes through your days, whether you receive it gently or with all your quills raised to defend against invaders. Take this on faith. The mind may never find the explanations that it seeks. 
but you will move forward nonetheless. Let go, and the wave's crest will carry you to unknown shores beyond your wildest dreams or destination. Let it all go and find the place of rest and peace and certain transformation. Gently come back into our physical bodies by wiggling the toes, wiggling the fingers, taking the head from left to right, left to right. Reaching the arms up overhead, legs together, pointing one last morning stretch. And then we'll roll on over to our favorite side, coming into a fetal position, knees bent, head resting gently on the upper arm. Coming into the fetal position to remind ourselves that yoga is a rebirth. We have the opportunity to leave this place a different woman than the one who showed up an hour ago. Using your bottom hand to gently lift yourself up into our supasana easeful seat, taking your time. When we're ready, we'll reach down, out, and up, calling on Grace one last time, pulling her down into our hearts, bowing the head. May we think kind thoughts, may we speak honest words, and may we lead with a humble heart. I thank you so much for practicing with me this morning. Namaste. Namaste. Thank you so much, Katie. Thank you, thank you. Thanks for sweating it out with me. <laughs>